Welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church on fourth Sunday of Advent. We're very sorry we cannot be worshiping with you in person, but we're very happy we can be with you in this way. And so we begin our worship together. Welcome. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among the, all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read together a portion of Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 19 through 26. Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 19 through 26. Let us pray the psalm together. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. 
I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Lord. You, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in, Gabriel, in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, I am here, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we have a theme running through our scripture. And it seems to be a question. Where does God reside? When you look at the conversation between Nathan the prophet and David in the, in the reading from the Hebrew scriptures that Lucian just read, you hear that being debated. Where does God reside? David's the king, thinking to himself, should I build a big, huge temple for God? That's what other religions do. And God comes to Nathan and says, I have been with you, and I will be with you as you wander. These were wanderers. These were nomads at the time. They had a tabernacle, and they set up a tent to worship. And that was fine, God said through Nathan. But I will build you a throne, and I will live in that throne. Then we go to the New Testament with Luke, and we hear the beautiful scripture about the angel talking to Mary. And Mary finding through surprise that she will conceive Jesus. She will bear a son. Notice her response. She's surprised, shocked, and the situation puts her in danger to be pregnant without being married. Notice her response. Here I am. That is the scriptural response of faithfulness. Pure, total, open faithfulness. This is God saying to Mary, surprise, I'm going to live in your heart and you are going to give birth to our son together. You will create this with me, this Jesus. 
And Mary, even though she's shocked, even though she's young, she responds affirmatively and immediately. And then we don't have it here, but the song of Mary, the Magnificat, she sings a radically beautiful song about God's love and how God's love will be released into the world through Jesus, through her son. So Mary becomes a vessel. In the Eastern tradition, they call her the God-bearer, Theotokos. She bears God into the world. And Mary stands for an example for each one of us. This is part of the work of the Christian life, to become the throne for God in our hearts, to let our own hearts be the place where God lives and where God breaks forth into the world. And so we, too, participate in the crazy love of God through Jesus. But it doesn't just happen. There's a period of time to to let that place in our hearts build and grow, to prepare to be a place for God's presence. It's a season of waiting. We wait for God, like Mary waited for God. Advent is a time to wait, to practice spiritually waiting for God, to be like Mary, who is overshadowed by God and opened and still respond affirmatively. We can only get there with patience. And if you look at Jesus' life and his ministry, you'll see this play out, this need to wait. You know, when he works with the disciples, if you read through the Gospels, he often tells them what to do. There's only one time that I can find, some of you biblical scholars may find others, But there's only one time I can find where Jesus asks the disciples in the depth of his humanity. He asks them. He gives them a need, and he asks them. It's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says, Can't you stay awake with me? Can you wait with me for just a bit while I'm going through this agony of preparing for the crucifixion? Please wait. When Jesus asks the disciples... He's also asking us to wait, to have patience, to allow our hearts to be still, to empty ourselves of fear, anxiety, especially in this season of COVID and in this election season that still continues to to go forward. Especially this Advent, we are waiting. We can't even come to church. So we wait. We wait quietly. We wait patiently. And we know through Scripture and through our worship that waiting is an act of holiness. And so I pray that you redouble your efforts to be patient, to be grounded in God, especially this Advent, especially in this time when our world is facing so many difficulties. God promises blessing. Open your heart. Empty it of fear, of anxiety. Do your work to create a space for God to live there. Soon you will go back out. Soon there will be a vaccine. Soon there will be stability in our common life together. Soon you will go back out. And you will bring God to others. But for now, we wait. We empty our hearts of fear and anxiety. And we allow God to live there. We do it together in a spiritual way. Amen. And now we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People, Form 4, found in your bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide us in the process of discerning a new rector for our parish. Give us wisdom and courage to find a caring pastor for our people, to serve you and a world in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, remembering Bev, Steve, Francis, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. We remember those who have asked for our prayers, including Donna, Anne, Joe, Kathy, Colleen, John, Albert, Bill, Jesse, we pray for all those impacted by COVID-19 and especially the medical care workers who are putting their lives at risk to protect us from COVID-19. Let us pray for all the men and women in the uniformed and armed services and their families. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Harbor Missional Community in Phoenix in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for mission agencies throughout the Anglican communion. We also pray for Navajo land and our new companion diocese of Western Mexico, along with our companion parish and school, St. Paul's in Haiti. 
For All Saints Episcopal Day School, our students, teachers, administrators, and support staff. For all who are visiting us today, may they find our community a place of welcome and spiritual nourishment. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you made us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are all baptized by the one Spirit into one body, and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Our purpose is to commission these persons in the name of God and of the congregation to a special ministry to which they are called. Are these persons you are, you are prepared, uh, are these persons you are to present prepared by a commitment to Christ as Lord, by regular attendance at worship, and by the knowledge of their duties to exercise their ministry to the honor of God and the well-being of his church? I believe they are. You have been called to the ministry of the community of hope in this congregation. Will you, as long as you are engaged in this work, perform it with diligence? I will. I will. I will. will you faithfully and reverently execute the duties of your ministry to the honor of God and the benefit of the members of this congregation. I, I will. Will you uphold in prayer those in a parish family who are in need and those visitors who will be caring for them? We will. We will. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son Jesus Christ said that we minister to him when we clothe the naked, give food to the hungry, and drink to the thirsty, and visit the sick and imprisoned. Go with all those who, following the command of your Christ, visit your people in his name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. In the name of God and of this congregation, I commission you as lay pastoral caregivers from the community of hope in this parish.
And now let us say together the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And now let us pray the prayer of St. Chrysostom together. Almighty God, You have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in you can do infinitely more than you can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen.